स्टार्ट ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर राघवेंद्र पी शेट्टर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑर्गनाइजर ऑफ योगामृत नेशनल वेबिनार द एस्टीम्ड इंस्टिट्यूट राजीव गांधी एजुकेशन सोसाइटीज आयुर्वेदिक मेडिकल कॉलेज हॉस्पिटल पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन स्टडीज एंड रिसर्च सेंटर रोड होल हार्टेडली वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर नेशनल वेबिनार योगामृत अर्जुन विषाद योग सांख्य योग भक्ति योग दीज आर नेम्स ऑफ अ फ्यू चैप्टर्स ऑफ द श्रीमद भगवद गीता एज वी नो ऑल दिस हाईलाइट्स अप्लीकेबिलिटी ऑफ योग बिकॉज लॉर्ड कृष्णा नोज दैट द ओनली थिंग विच जॉइंट्स बिटवीन द बॉडी एंड माइंड इज कॉल्ड एज योग टेकिंग दिस एज अ थीम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्वस्थ वृत्त आर जी एस ए एम सी रोड हैव आउटकम विथ नेशनल वेबिनार yogamrata today is second day of webinar first i request to join with for with me for a prayer om namami dhanvantarim aadi devam sura surai vandita पाद पद्म लोके जरारुभय मृत्युनाशम दातारमीशम विविधीना धन्वरी रनाथ सर्वग निवारक आयुर्वेद प्रवक्ता वंदे ओ योगे न चित्तस्य पदे न वाचा मल शरीर चैद्यक यो पाकोक्त प्रवर मुनीना पतंजली प्राजली राणतस्म शांति 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 थैंक यू नाउ इट्स अ टाइम टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू सो आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर अन्नपूर्णा डम्बल मैडम टू डिलीवर वेलकम स्पीच एंड गिव इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ गेस्ट स्पीकर थैंक यू सर श्री गुरुभ्यो नम Good evening, all. With spring in my step, curiosity in mind, anticipation in the heart, I, Dr. Annapurna Dambal, coordinator of Yoga Amrita webinar. Great honor for me to welcome all of you to today's webinar series. First, I would like to extend my heartly gratitude and regards to today's guest speaker, great personality, Pradma Sri, Dr. John Ebenezer. He delivering the speech on yoga for managing stress related orthopedic problems. Behalf of management, principal, staff, organizing committee, and student, I heartily welcome you, sir. Let me introduce our esteemed speaker to you. The list of his achievements and accomplishment is whose to briefly put in front of you. Dr John Ebenezer is internationally renowned Indian orthopedic surgeon Bangalore sir completed MBBS DNB from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College Belagavi Karnataka he has been known for promoting holistic orthopedics a practice combining modern medical techniques with yoga for the management of osteoarthritis of the knees and other chronic orthopedic problems like Lower back pain, neck pain, 
frozen shoulder, etc. Awards and achievements of the sir. Sir completed PhD in yoga. They did seven original research works and received three times best research award for arthritis, fracture treatment, and spinal cord injury from Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anusandana Samsthana Yoga University, Bangalore. And yoga research approved by AAOS, that is American Association of Orthopedic Surgeons, which is recommended by 185 countries. He was honored the Padma Shri Award in 2016. He was also the first and only orthopedic surgeon from Karnataka to get the Dr. B.C. Roy National Award. Sir recently received his second national award, that is Silver Jubilee Research Award by the Medical Council of India in 2018. He has also got the Karnataka Rajyotsava Prashasti in 2010 and Kempegoda Prashasti in 2011. So far, he has received more than 275 international, national and state awards for his outstanding achievements in the field of orthopedics, making him one of the most decorated orthopedic surgeon of India. Made eight Guinness Book of World Records, among eight them, three for social service, two for books written, and three for health awareness. He was the author of over 200 books, all related to medical science, and is the only Indian orthopedic surgeon to have his books translated into Spanish and Italian language. Sir, you are great inspiration us. And once again, I cordially welcome you and thank you for being with us and giving your valuable time in your busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I also heartily welcome to each member of the scientific committee and organizing committee members. And heartily invite the delegates and YouTube viewers on behalf of management, principal, staff, staff members, and organizing committee for showing the immense interest in Yoga Amrita series. So once again, I heartily welcome to one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Anpurna Dambal, madam. Now it's a time to be a part of webinar. Without wasting much time, I request our eminent speaker, Dr. John Abnazer, sir, to deliver the topic, Yoga for Management of Stress-Related Orthopedic Problems. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raghavandar Shetar. Thank you, Dr. Annapurna Dambal, for your introduction. Well, it's uh, a great honor to be a speaker in your uh, webinar, which is being organized by the Medical College. I've been uh, uh, told to speak uh, about orthopedic disorders and how stress causes the modern orthopedic problems. Now, uh, the majority of the audience here want to listen to me in Canada or English? English. Okay, fine. Now, uh, you know what are all the orthopedic problems? It's one of the uh, musculoskeletal problems is one of the most common disorders uh, which the world population uh, suffers. Get... <laughs> Start again, Hello? Okay, fine. Uh, so among the various diseases like say cancer or say infection or uh, say tumors or say um, congenital problems, development problems like that, you've got musculoskeletal problems. Mm -hmm. And musculoskeletal problems involve muscles, bones, joints, right? So what are the common musculoskeletal problems the world over? Most common is low back ache. Low back ache is uh, a public health problem and it is suffered by 80% of the world population and it is said to be next only common to headache. Then you've got arthritis, osteoarthritis of the knees wherein, you know, the joints get degenerated and in the old age, more than 10 to 13% of the world population will suffer from arthritis. Then there is neck pain. Uh, neck pain because of, uh, you know, youngsters also suffer from uh, neck pain. Old people also suffer from neck pain. Uh, old people suffer from neck pain because of spondylitis. Young people suffer from neck pain because of lifestyle problems. 
and then you have got shoulder pain and uh, shoulder pain you know wherein there will be restriction of movement what we call as frozen shoulder then you have got heel pain uh, patients will have problems in uh, walking in putting their foot down in the morning and other things and then you have got uh, repetitive stress injuries or computer stress injuries what we call this is uh, related to the modern lifestyle people working in uh, in the it field ppo field they suffer from repeated you know problems repeated stress problems like neck pain back pain shoulder pain finger pain elbow pain all this kind of pain that is called repetitive stress injuries then you have one of the most devastating um, orthopedic uh, problem called osteoporosis and osteoporosis is a hollow bone problem that means the bones become hollow as the person ages in his old age there will be weak bones and you can see uh, you might have seen old people with scoliosis and uh, with uh, kyphosis they are bent forwards they are you know walking with a walking stick that is a disease called osteoporosis what that does, this is does is it causes the spine it causes all the bones in the body to become weak so the bones break easily so now these are the these are the in, these are the a long list of uh, musculoskeletal problems which uh, the humanity suffers not just in india across the globe now what are the causes for all this in uh, causes always in in, in medical science uh, we say there are risk factors and in the risk factors we have got modifiable, modifiable risk factors non modifiable risk factors right so modifiable risk factors non modifiable risk factors together cause a disease right what are the non modifiable risk factors aging may be one which cannot be changed that's why it's called non modifiable risk factor then the sex females suffer from arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis and then uh, the ethnicity or your race the asian countries you know the people who live in asian countries suffer from arthritis more than western countries so these are the non modifiable risk factor which we cannot change but there are so many modifiable risk factors which we can control which we can change so what are those um the most common modifiable risk factor is obesity weight you can control this right smoking alcohol you can control this and then sedentary lifestyle you can control this and uh, improper postures you can control this all this causes musculoskeletal problems uh, your uh, improper posture your poor lifestyle your habits like smoking alcohol drugs and then overweight all this causes disease like arthritis back pain so this can be changed that is why it's called modifiable risk factors and among all this the most important modifiable risk factor is stress modern stress 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 you may ask what stress got to do with orthopedic problems well i can give you any number of examples to say that stress has got a direct relation with the musculoskeletal conditions you know stress can cause hypertension you can you know stress can cause diabetes you can know stress can cause overeating or eating which can lead to obesity likewise stress can cause musculoskeletal problem how how does it cause see what does stress do what does stress do when you are what is stress first of all stress is your abnormal thinking excessive thinking your mind is working at a very fast pace so the whole you know uh, the system is impaired because your entire body is controlled by the brain the brain is a supercomputer which controls your all the organs in the body now when the brain is disturbed due to abnormal thinking what we call stress then there will be impairment of the functioning of all the organs in the body the stress hormones which you are well aware all adrenaline noradrenaline which can cause increased heart beat uh, which can cause palpitation which can cause sweating which can cause fear which can cause insecurity all these hormones go up because they are the stress hormones they are the hormones which you know will help the body to cope the stress when in excess it causes innumerable problems like it increases your blood pressure it impairs your thought process it impairs your thinking and then <coughs> it may cause uh, an exacerbation of comorbidities like diabetes hypertension all these kind of things right now when the stress becomes more the 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 neck uh, muscles like the trapezius 
and the lower back muscles like the lumbar muscles all of these muscles get hyper activated and then patient suffers from agonizing pain so stress is one of the cause that is why uh, this uh, musculoskeletal problem in youngsters has increased by leaps and bounds why because uh, they are all working for uh, in, in a pressure cooker situation in their offices in their house uh, working from home working from office they sit from 9 to 10 uh, from 9 a.m to 6 a.m 10 a.m they, they work continuously for more than 10 to 12 hours imagine what will happen they have no good you know sunshine they have no good air to breathe and they sit in cramped position and uh, there is so much of pressure workload project deadlines so they have to complete that work and they most of them stay at far away distance so they have to travel from there and reach in a city like metropolitan city like bombay uh, bangalore chennai you can imagine what is the traffic and in the traffic they can they have to come to the work they have to get up early in the morning and they, they don't have time even for exercise they have to rush because to reach the office take one hour two hours sometimes three hours too because of the traffic then once they reach the office uh, they are you know cramped in the seats for hours together and then uh, once they leave the office, it is already very late. It's more than uh, seven, eight in the evening. And again, they take two hours to return home. Once they come home, they're exhausted. They can't interact with their families, with their children, with their wives, and they just crumble. So what happens? There's enormous mental stress. That is why you see so many youngsters committing suicide. You might have seen, you know, all you know, these people working in corporate sectors, young lives, so which are supposed to be um, enjoying their existence in this world, want to end their lives. Why? Because of the stress. And this stress causes increased metabolism, increased destruction of the cartilage, and you may end up in premature osteoarthritis. All the orthopedic problems like arthritis, back pain, which are supposed to come in old age are now preponed to young age because excessive stress, excessive metabolic activity, excessive cartilage degradation in the joints will cause the inflammation, will cause the pain to happen quickly and the patient starts suffering from spondylitis in early age. Spondylitis, you know, is degeneration of the spine. So they have degenerated spine, they have degenerated back, they have degenerated knees, they have degenerated um, you know, hip joints. So you know, all the joints you know, get involved and um, all this uh, has speeded up because of the stress. So mental stress has got direct bearing with the, uh, with the orthopedic conditions. It has got direct bearing, indirect bearing. Direct bearing, I told you how. The increased metabolism, the increased hormones, the increased uh, degradation of the cartilage can directly cause uh, the happenings, uh, the date changes in the damages in the cartilage and joints and cause arthritis and other things. And indirectly, by raising the blood pressure, by raising the sugar, by raising the comorbidities, by causing a mental and emotional imbalance, the patient may put on weight or the diabetes may go up and the nerve sensitivity may increase. And that may again, you know, uh, you know impair the, uh, the, the, the life of or the, the functioning of the joints and the bones. So it is a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Stress spins web around the individual directly and indirectly, apart from causing problems like diabetes, hypertension, it also causes orthopedic problems. And that is why in the entire world now, the young populations are suffering from musculoskeletal problems like never before. And accidents, trauma, I didn't tell you about that. Musculoskeletal, you know, most important issues are the traumatic fractures, which we undergo because of increased road traffic accidents, increased fall, uh, increased, you know, impatience, assault, all this happening. Why? Because of extreme mental pressure, tension. You might have heard people are returning back from office, youngsters, and in, uh, in the midnight, there somebody comes and hits their car or vehicle. They get on from the vehicle. They're so much agitated, stressed. They start hitting each other and they end up in fractures. So you can say that it's because of the extreme mental and emotional imbalance. There is, you know, increased accident rates, there is increased assault rates, increased fractures, increased falls, and all this is because of stress. So that means stress has got a direct bearing, and now the, the, um, the stress has become pandemic. You might have heard about corona becoming pandemic. Uh, you're all scared about, you know, corona because it will kill you. But you have forgotten that stress is killing you more than corona. And it's a big pandemic. 
all people across the world, whether it is Americans, Europeans, Indians, Chinese, whoever, they all are suffering from extreme mental stress. And stress causes all diseases, including musculoskeletal diseases. Now, what happens in these patients, when they come to us with the musculoskeletal pain, I give them painkillers, I give them ointment, gel, injection, physiotherapy, exercise therapy, still the pain doesn't come up. Why? Because we have failed to address an important issue called stress. This is where the role of yoga comes. The role of yoga comes. Yoga is a beautiful science. It's a gift to the world from India. And yoga is about 5,000 years old. And uh, yoga has got a uh, multiple beneficial effects. Now, see, by doing asanas, by doing the, the loosening practice, strengthening practice, what it does is it strengthens your joints, it strengthens your muscles, it improves your posture, gait, coordination, all that because of strong musculoskeletal system. See, if you have got a strong musculoskeletal system, you look handsome, you look you know, strong. Why? Because your muscles are, you know, full of strength, energy. So that can be filled up by yoga. Yoga, endurance exercise. See, when you do asana, then you hold for some time, you're putting stress on the on the on the you stress, not the bad stress, good stress on the muscles. So the muscles become strong. When the muscles become strong, your posture improves, gait improves, balance improves, coordination improves. So this is what happens with the asanas. Then when you do you know, practices like meditation, it calms down your mind. It calms down your agitated mind. So what happens? Agitated mind secretes adrenaline, non-adrenaline, and uh, you know, cytokinins, all these kind of destructive hormones. Now, what does the calm mind secret? It secrets dopamine. It secrets oxytocin. These are feel-good hormones. You start feeling good from inside because the dopamine and the serotonin hormones go up in the body, and then you start feeling very calm and secure. And then you have the emotional control, the mental control. And then you are, because of a good health, because of good emotional and mental control, which yoga gives you, you will have a better social life. You'll become a good social animal. You are, you are a happy person. You are a, you are a satisfied person. You start interacting with everyone with love, affection, care. You are no longer agitated. Then what happens? Your social life also improves. So yoga has got a multi-dimensional effect. Now, if you take other exercises, like for example, aerobics, gym, swimming, all these have got unidirectional. You need to strengthen your body. You keep lifting weight in the gym. What happens? Your muscles become strong. But what about your mind? That is why all these athletes, you might have heard these gym guys, you know, who are having, you know, a, 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 what to say, uh, um, uh, ASIC, what is that? Six-pack abdomen. They all end up in, you know, in the crime business, or they all end up giving up their lives. Why? They have developed their bodies, but their mind is not developed. So unidirectional. Whereas yoga is multidirectional. You get physical strength, you get emotional strength, you get you know, mental strength because of that. Your spirituality improves, so you get spiritual strength because of all these four. You become a good social animal, so you live in peace with everyone. So it is like saying, with yoga, with one stone, you hit multiple birds. So it is a Rambana, you can say. It will kill 10 heads of Ravana. And like each disease has got multiple heads. Huh? That heads are tackled by one Rambana, that is yoga. And yoga has got a lot of relevance. And yoga will be useful for the uh, all age groups, whether it's child, whether it is young people, middle-aged people, old people, or still older, old people, whoever does yoga will benefit from yoga. Musculoskeletal improvement happens. Your diseases come down. Arthritis slows down. Back pain is addressed well. Your neck pain is addressed well. And then your strength increases, stamina increases, your focus increases, your concentration increases, your work productivity goes up, and then you will not have you know, frequent mental breakdown. You will be a strong person. You are now equipped well to take charge of yourself so that you can face the tough challenges in the world. So yoga, when it is added to modern medicine, like drugs, physio, 
exercise, surgery. You add yoga therapy to this, then what happens? The lacuna is filled up and the treatment becomes wholesome. So it becomes a holistic approach. Holistic is not spiritual approach. Holistic is whole body approach, wherein you are addressing the entire body, not just through yoga, but modern science and yoga combined. It is like Swami Vivekananda saying, East and West combination. See, Swami Vivekananda, 120 years ago, he had said this. He said, see, there are good things in the East, Eastern countries. There are good things in the Western countries. No one is superior with each other. You need to learn discipline, research, and uh, methodical working from the West. You need to learn the culture, the tradition, the family respect from the East. So he tells the Westerners, you learn from the East. And East, and East and Indians, he tells you learn from the West. So when you combine East and West, you get a win-win situation. That means you have the benefit of both Eastern and Western. Modern science and yoga is combination of East and West. And that would be an uh, that would be enormous success for the patients and for the people. And not only in the treatment, also the preventive aspects. So you will not encounter problems like osteoporosis or uh, arthritis in the first place if you practice yoga from the beginning. And uh, that's what the research what I did in the uh, ESVSA under the leadership of uh, uh, our Guruji, Charnagendra Ji and Madam Nagarata Madam, we produced so many papers on arthritis and other things. And the paper what was published in the leading journals was picked up by the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Uh, and they have used my three research papers in uh, recommending the treatment for osteoarthritis of the knee, that is non-orthroplasty treatment, that is non-knee replacement treatment. And they have given it as recommendation number one. And they have given it as a strong evidence, which has to be practiced all over the world by everyone. No patient can ask a question whether it is uh, it should be done or not. When you add yoga into self-management program, health, health education program, neuromuscular education, and all these alterations of your lifestyle, that becomes the recommendation number one. There are 11 recommendations for the treatment of osteoarthritis, like physiotherapy, weight loss, uh, then uh, uh, the injection therapies, the stem cell therapies, and then uh, uh, the <coughs> therapies what you use, all of this. So all these other treatment modalities, glucosamine, chondritin sulfates, that is nutraceuticals, these are all the recommendations by AOS. In that, the first recommendation they do is for yoga-based approach that is called AOS recommendation number one, and that is based on three research papers of mine. That means now we have got scientific proof to say that when yoga is added into modern science, it becomes a very effective tool in treating modern musculoskeletal problems across the world. Whether it's back pain, knee pain, arthritis, you name it. Even rheumatoid arthritis for that matter, where stress plays a very big role. Stress has got a magnifying effect in rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, as you all know, is an autoimmune disorder. In an autoimmune disorder, when there is severe mental and emotional stress, the stress hormone triggers the, 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 the pain mechanisms and the patient suffers enormously due to rheumatoid arthritis. Their yoga has got a role. Osteoarthritis, their yoga has got a role. Osteoporosis, where the bones have become weak, there also yoga has got a role. And modern lifestyle problems like tennis elbow, like uh, uh, neck pain, um, like uh, shoulder pain, there also your yoga, our yoga has got a great role in controlling this problem. So in short, what I would like to say is stress has got a direct role in modern musculoskeletal problems, both in youngsters and in old people. And don't think that stress only causes depression and uh, hypertension uh, and diabetes and all. No, it causes arthritis. It causes back pain. It, it, it is a significant uh, non-modifiable uh, risk factor. So that means if you control stress, you can control musculoskeletal problem as easy as it is. So it is definitely worth it if you can tackle stress. And how do you tackle stress? How do you tackle stress? It's a million dollar question. How do you tackle stress? Not easy, not easy. 
you are so easy you do not have seen people dying recently you saw that shushan singh rajput in spite of having such a successful life he gives up everything why he cannot handle stress he cannot he has not been taught how to handle stress so to teach how to handle stress is a very very big thing challenge the medical science and the best way to tackle stress is balanced thinking measured life and practices like yoga you know which can reduce your stress to a great extent live like a yogi practice yoga and definitely you know your quality of life will go up mental physical emotional social and spiritual life improves and then automatically stress goes down well now this is what i had to tell about the role of stress how to handle stress and how it has got a bearing on mus musculoskeletal problems now i invite you all to ask me questions which you want to know from me so that whether it's a common man or a doctor you, you are free to ask any questions and i'm here to answer you uh, to the best of my knowledge please go ahead and ask me any questions what you feel like well the time is precious time is running out if there are no questions then i think we can go on to the next level continue sir
with this, uh, get in touch with me, those uh, students who are doing the yoga practice so that I tell them. Okay, you can say me and my if you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is that. Maybe, me and my. We will be doing that. You tell that. But I, I, can I see that? Yeah. What you're doing? Uh -huh. Okay, now we will have some practical demonstration uh, from young uh, doctors. Uh, to you, what are the important uh, you know, asanas which you should practice uh, to address the musculoskeletal problems? Okay, right, great. So now, um, before we start the you know, asana practices or yoga practices, it's always important to loosen all your joints. So now there will be a demonstration of loosening practices. Loosening practices should be methodical. First, it should be the upper limb loosening practice, lower limb loosening practice, the neck and the shoulder loosening practice before you start the asanas. The loosening practice is very important. Don't start off doing the asanas before losing, right? So, loosening practice to the audience. Upper limb loosening practice. Okay. Upper limb loosening practices. These are the neck loosening practices, which is you know uh, to be done along with the upper limb loosening practice. Shoulder loosening practice. You saw the neck loosening practice. Now you are seeing the shoulder loosening practice. Rotation clockwise, anti clockwise. Wrist rotation, clockwise, anti-clockwise, elbow flexion extension, Finger flexion, extension. Next, do the elbow flexion extension. Trunk rotation, trunk loosening practice, clockwise, anti clockwise. Good. Now, lower limb, lower limb loosening practice, sitting on the chair. Please loosen the toes, ankle, and the knee joints. Extend your knee. Now, loosen the toes. Flexion, extension of the toes. That is rotation of the ankle. Loosen the toes. 
rotate clockwise anti clockwise inflation knee flexion extension knee joint bend and stretch bend and stretch stretch forward rotation knee rotation now let us start the after the loosening practice once your body is completely loosened now let us start the asana practices standing asana tadasan slowly forward flexion do pada hastasan hold for some time this causes great flexibility of the spine this should not be done for low back ache patients but other problems they can do this so let us start the chakrasan ardha kati chakrasan very good you can see how the side uh, the chest and the abdomen muscles get stretched with this and even the shoulder gets stretched excellent practices for neck pain shoulder pain back pain on the other side ardha kati chakrasan the other side very good now ardha chakrasan very good practice for the neck muscles back muscles buttocks gluteal muscles the thigh muscles all the muscles are stretched well with this even the abdomen muscles are stretched well so this stores up your body so these are the simple standing asanas which we recommend and some patients or some people who are good they can do vrakshasan trikonasan all those kind of things but not for elderly people we don't recommend that for um, people with arthritis and all because they may damage the joints next let us go like the supine exercise lying down position exercise lie down on the floor supine exercise well simple straight leg raise 30 degrees 60 degrees 90 degrees 
First, lays the leg to 30 degrees. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hold it for some time. Raise the leg to 30 degrees. Hold it for some time. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put it down. Now, raise it to 60 degrees. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down. Now, raise to 90 degrees. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put it down. Do it on the other side. 30 degree leg raise. Down. 60 degree leg raise. Down. 90 degree leg raise. Count 1 to 10 or 1 to 5. Very good. Now, both the legs together, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90, 30 degrees. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, count, down. Then 60 degrees. What this does is it strengthens the quadriceps muscle, abdomen muscle, chest muscle, down. Then 90 degrees. Ah, count one, two, three, four, five. Down. Now, together, raise both the legs. Navakasana. Try to touch the toes with your fingers, with your hand. You can see the amount of stretch that happens to the spine muscles and to the leg muscles and to the upper limb muscles. Down. You can do Pavana Mukta Asana in the supine position. These are simple supine asanas which we recommend for musculoskeletal problems. Then now sitting asanas. Padmasana. Padmasana. This is to be done by younger patients, not by senior citizens not by patients who are having osteoarthritis of the knees. These are simple um, and, uh, uh, the sitting asanas which can be done by youngsters not to gain control over their lower limbs and their lower back uh, because they have to sit in the office for a long time. So this will strengthen their body. So Padmasana, then Vakrasana. These are to be done by younger patients. Please remember, no senior citizen should attempt this. Very good. Now, please demonstrate Vajrasana. To 
be done by younger patients, not by senior citizens. Now, you can show them Shashanka Asana. Yes, <coughs> excellent practice for the spine. You can see the knee joint, the back muscles, the abdominal muscles, all you know get stretched and strong. Now let us go to the prone asanas. This can be done by senior citizens. The prone asanas. Yeah, Makarasan will be the last. The first one is Bhujangasana. See, this will expand the chest. You can see how much the spine gets flexed, extended. So this extension causes it's a great relief for back pain. Next, Dhanurasana. Yeah, see the spine, how it becomes, the chest expanded. Very good for kyphosis, for osteoporosis patients, where the chest has become crowded. And, um, you know, so, so, so much of extension, you can see. If you can't do this much extension, it's all right. Whatever is possible from your side, you please do. It's not that you have to do this, this amount of, uh, you know, practice. Uh, this can be done to your comfort level. Don't overdo and hurt yourself. Shashanka uh, Shalabhasana. Shalabhasana. No need to do this kind of extension. In extra, it is fine. Serious citizens can just lift their legs. Great. Then, Followed by Makarasana. Makarasana. Makarasana is a relaxing posture in uh, the prone position. I'm doing all this to Shavasana. You know, Shavasana should be done for seven minutes. It's the loosening of all the joints from the toes to the head. Then there are two more relaxation practices called instant relaxation and quick relaxation. Instant relaxation is done for one minute and it is tightening of all the joints from the toes to the head. Quick relaxation technique is a breathing practice where you synchronize your abdominal movements with inhalation and exhalation with chanting of Ukara. And then lastly, you have got the deep relaxation, also called a Shavasana. After doing all this, then you have a few thoughts, like I'm healthy, I'm happy, these kind of thoughts, and then sit up and do the pranayam. And the recommended pranayam for musculoskeletal conditions is Nadi Shodhana Pranayam because it is known to balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic system. And this is known to have a calming effect on the mind. So Nadi Shodhana Pranayam in sitting position. Alternate nostril breathing. So breathing practices are known to cause good chest expansion also. It will strengthen all the respiratory muscles. It will open your dormant alveoli. So there will be good oxygen you are taking inside, oxyhemoglobin. So the entire nutrition for the cells improves all over the body. 
the chest you know uh, physiotherapy happens with this and you know corona is one disease which affects the lungs more so one excellent practice where you can fight the corona with this kind of nadi shodhana pranayama which strengthens your respiratory muscles opens up the alveoli and helps fight the disease the virus then finally you should do meditation practice meditation which you will come and get it and whatever you know you want you can imagine in your mind or you can concentrate on the tip of your nose and observe the uh, the cold air going in and the hot air coming in or you can imagine a picture or you can imagine an object you can imagine a, 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 a deity of your choice inside the mind and do meditation for 3 to 5 minutes so now you 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 saw this uh, integrated approach of yoga practice what we say why we call this as integrated you could see here that we had physical practice we got mental practice we got breathing practice and in the physical practice we got loosening practice strengthening practice asana practice and then uh, um, in in the, in the relaxation techniques you have got three relaxation technique one is irt dqrt and drt that is why this is called integrated uh, yoga approach excellent for musculoskeletal problem these are the precise yoga yoga asanas and yoga approach which we have used in all our research work and we have got publications in almost everything like back pain neck pain osteoporosis uh, and uh, uh, the fracture the shoulder fracture healing happens early with this and your spinal cord injuries uh, the recovery is faster so these are the things one should practice and i am sure with uh, this practice and with good spiritual you know um, uh, practice and good diet and um, uh, away from bad habits like smoking alcohol can give you an excellent body strong body fit body to fight the modern musculoskeletal problems which i enumerated in the beginning thank you thank you sir thank you sir for uh, showing the wonderful demonstration some uh, audience questions are there sir i will ask by dr raghavendra please sir in kannada la helbeka english la helbeka ah okay no problem sir tell in english only no problem sir question kelidor yaro ellinda audience sir audience kelidare ha nimma nodu nindu kelta idara ha yes sir yes sir age is 40 female patient ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ the peripheral yes, hand joints are the yes. ones which are commonly affected then you have a small it's a disease of the smaller joints rheumatoid arthritis of course it is not so much just smaller joints but predominantly it is a uh, arthritis affects rheumatoid arthritis affects the fingers the toes so loosening practice strengthening practice of the fingers toes and the single leg raise 30 60 90 double leg raise navakasan is a great you know uh, exercise for the knee joints along with quadriceps exercise and uh, all other things what we show like uh, bhujangasan dhanurasan for the spine for the neck right so almost all integrated approach and most importantly rheumatoid arthritis patient get extreme stress sir that yakandre adu it's a long disease and a long morbidity just in that so for them they need to practice you know meditation techniques pranayam techniques so that they will have a greater control of their emotional and mental uh, factors along with that medications uh, rheumatoid arthritis one thing they have to have drug therapy illandra agadilla bari yoga so drug therapy homeopathy drugs or unani siddha it doesn't matter what drugs they are taking it all depends on their convenience and their ability but along with that add the yoga therapy meditation practice deep breathing techniques i think it will be wonderful you can control rheumatoid arthritis 
thank you sir thank you another question sir so what are all the important asanas for specially osteoporosis so please in india osteoporosis causes weakening of the bones tollu mule kaide it's a tollu mule huh what are mule right what we call hollow bones in english right so what it does is it makes the bones weak and it also makes the muscles weak in and around that is called sarcopenia sarcopenia means weakening of the muscles so in osteoporosis you have got both you got sarcopenia you got osteopenia and you can cause the process so all these practices which was shown to them should be done very mild it should not be very uh, you should not do in uh, exaggerated posture like what was shown because that may break the bones simple loosening practice will strengthen the muscles and the chest because they will have become like that they will become kyphotic so for that the extension exercise like bhujangasan dhanurasan shalabhasan very good to open up the chest for uh, osteoporotic patient but they it should be done very gently we should not they should not apply too much of force because they may end up in pathological fractures so they should be careful you should not over so simple walking simple walking practice is enough to strengthen the muscles and the bones in osteoporosis thank you sir thank you another question sir uh, what are all the pre precautionary measures should take uh, while performing the yogic karmas especially arthritis patient please in kannada sir please in kannada okay so you should know what you should not do well what you should not do you should not do extreme postures like vajrasan an arthritis patient should not do vajrasan virasan padmasan and all he can do sit in sukhasan position yes he can do standing postures you know tadasan padasthasan ardhakadi chakrasan ardha chakrasana pranasanas can be done conveniently but don't attempt uh, like shirs right then ekim uh, chasan then vakrasan uh, these things should not be done by senior citizens because it will harm them so don't overdo and forward bending exercise should be avoided when there is a disc prolapse you should not do forward bending exercise like padasthasan and um, all that kind of exercise should not be done and don't overdo yoga do my always no what you should not do some people think if i do more yoga i'll get more relief quick relief i become very strong no it is not like that it has to be slow and steady so avoid extreme postures avoid overdoing things and always try to take a professional help when you are about to start and perform the yoga of course meditation pranayam can be done uh, with without any fear because that is not going to cause any damage thank you sir thank you for uh, clearance the audience doubt thank you sir thank you yeah thank you okay i thank uh, dr john abnezer sir for uh, deliver a wonderful talk on stress management through yoga specifically in uh, orthopedic problems doctor has uh, enriched us by his deep knowledge and with the uh, demonstrating also thank you sir thank you very much thank you dr raghavendra thank you for the opportunity given and uh, i wish you know you all the best in the road uh, i feel uh, that's a great service you are doing in rural places and uh, this kind of uh, webinars uh, trying to reach people across uh, is a great initiative taken by your college keep it up and uh, see that the knowledge spreads and people become healthier stronger and uh, this will lead to a strong nation that's what we want thank you thank you sir thank you now it's a time to wind up the session i request dr manjunath ajna sir to propose the vote of thanks manjunath sir thank you sir thank you raghavendra shetty sir so i thank uh, thank the organizer for giving me an opportunity to speak on these great occasions where we have a, a series of webinar on yogamrita especially today's uh, uh, chief guest that is uh, dr john ebna sir sir so he has enlightened uh, very deep knowledge about the yoga and orthopedics so on behalf of our institute and uh, management principal sir and staff and student i thank uh, uh, all the you know uh, uh, speakers so i thank dr uh, uh, john ebjin uh, ebinazar sir orthopedic center bangalore who delivered an inspiring speech on yoga for the management of stress related orthopedic problems 
on behalf of organizers and principal president uh, staff members and student i thank you sir and i'm sure that all the participants are enlightened with your sp uh, speech and even uh, activities i extend my thanks to the principal sir uh, dr ib kotri shetty sir he is uh, backbone of all such activities without uh, his inspiration and even activity uh, this program would not be happened i thank on behalf of management and uh, staff and students sir i extend my thanks to the all the delegates who have participated from across the india and uh, i'm sure all the participants are enlightened with uh, knowledge about the yoga i thank on behalf of management and uh, principal sir and uh, staff and students uh, i extend my thanks to the technical staff uh, mr jishnu and team who helped in smooth conduction of this webinar series uh, i uh, extend the thanks from the uh, management and principal sir and uh, staff members and students last but last but not the least i extend my sincere thanks to the department of swasthrutta yoga and scientific committee of rgs pmc round for the their active involvement in conduction of this program i uh, on behalf of management and staff a uh, principal sir and uh, st uh, student i extend i extend my thanks to the you also sir uh, last uh, thank you all for your uh, active involvement and participating and conducting this program successful thank you thank you one and all over to the rps thank you thank you sir for uh, out of time by following yoga and yogic karma we can overcome stress so that we can lead life healthy and joyful feel bliss the yoga with this we, we will conclude the session so i request all to join with me for shanti mantra om sarve jana sukhino bhavantu sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu कश्चिद दुख बाधवे ओ शांति 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 थैंक यू टुमारो सेम टाइम फाइव पी एम लेट्स मीट फॉर द लास्ट डे सेशन सो आई विल आई विल रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ युगामृता थैंक यू थैंक यू वन एंड ऑल नमस्ते